Yeah. We drop a beat. <laughs> Let's go, Diamante. We got some freestyle from oh. uh, from the Savage. All right, welcome back, everybody. Matchroom Radio. We're here in Newcastle. Uh, in the north of England, I am your host David Diamante. Yesterday, man, we just had a, a, a great show. It was it was really great speaking with Lewis Ritson. Um, he's an absolute warrior and a gentleman. So uh, if you haven't checked it out yet, please check it out and don't forget to like and subscribe on YouTube Plus, uh, Apple, and Spotify podcasts. Okay, so today we are joined by the one and only Alan Babich. The Savage is in the house. I, I'm so happy. Um, you know, I, I have to say, well, first of all, how are you, buddy? <laughs> well, I have to say thank you for inviting me. I've been waiting for this call for a long time. I was like, when is Yamate going to call me? I want to go to here, you know, you go into all these deep uh, subjects and stuff, you know, themes and stuff. So I really like your show and I watch you all the time. Well, thank you. It's my honor to have you. And I'll tell you, you know, you and I, we've, we've got um, good synergy. You know, I, we've been together from the beginning. I mean, I yeah. remember in, in Rome... In 2019, your pro debut. I, I remember it like yesterday. God, I can't believe it. I was like, in, I was like, is that David Diamante? And you calling out my name? It's crazy. It was crazy for me. I was, I was telling everybody at home. I met David Diamante, you know, <laughs> and that me and you, uh, our, mine and your picture we had from the ring. You yes, know? I yes. framed it. Yeah, I was really? like, yeah, this is this is my day. You know, this is my first day. So. I have nothing but respect for you, brother. Forever. Thank you, thank you, and it's likewise. And and you got a second round stoppage that day. And, uh, yeah, I'll never forget it. You, you know, you're one of my favorite guys to see on fight week, um, because you always make it interesting. You're always fun. You always bring the energy and you're always come to fight, you know? Yeah. Well, listen, this is what I do. You know, I understand this is a spectator sport and I do everything for the fans. Like I said, you know, I don't care about me. I don't care what happens to me. I showed that, you know, I ended up on the hospital bed, you know, broken because I went all in <laughs> a little bit too much. You know, I threw 115 punches in one round. I do all of that for the fans, you know, and for you guys, for you, whole, whole of the team, you know, you work so hard on promoting me and stuff. And I just feel obligated to, to return something back. You know. I know you do. I know you do. And, and, and I know you have a huge heart, maybe uh, one of the biggest I've ever seen. And oh, thank you, brother. And, and I know you want to do it for the fans. And so that's why today uh, there's so much to talk about. But I want to I want to try to talk a little bit about your background because I think I don't know if the fans know so much about your background. Um, obviously, you're Croatian and you come from a small town on the coast called Rovinj. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. W what was that like growing up? Well, listen, uh, my first 18 years it was how can I say shit? You know, <laughs> nothing happened. You know, and I was just in. Uh, being in that town, in a beautiful town called Roving, you gotta come, you know, you're gonna be my guest. And it's a beautiful town, but there is no possibilities whatsoever. You can only be a bartender, you know, or you are a manager of, of, of some bars and stuff. And I don't know how to be waiter, you know. <laughs> I think that, you know, uh, I, I admire the ones who do, but I don't know how to do that. So I was just lost for the 18 years. I walked the city like a ghost, you know. Nobody even knew I was there. When, when you say that it was bad, was it that it was just bad things happened or it was just boring? No, it was just boring. That's the baddest of them all, you know. If, if it bad things happen to you, that's an exciting life. You know, I can go to prison and stuff. That would be much better. <laughs> that would be much better than my life for <laughs> 17, 18 years. It was so boring. I was like, in the school, I, I wasn't good. You know, I was like middle grades, three and fours, you know, stupid. And I didn't know what to do. You know, I didn't know. I, I, I went to, to school for the electrician guy. And I don't know how to change a light bulb. It well, doesn't it, interest me. So. It, did, it didn't take. I was yeah. I was like, what the what the fuck am I gonna do with my life, you know? And then, one w one day I was working as a security guard. I was uh, actually uh, taking care of some grass. How, there's no need to say it because it's a hotel, and I, I'm looking for the yard. You know, <laughs> just walking in the yards. You know, it's a stupid job. The most stupid job I ever had. 12 hours of, of working, uh, walking around the, this hotel. And one, one uh, woman who works there a lot told me, why don't you do something with your life? And I was like, what am I going to do? You know, I, I don't have money to go anywhere. You know? how, how old were you at this time? H how old oh, were I you? I was uh, 17 or 18, 18 years old. 19 years old, actually. Yeah, I was 19 years old. I was already a man. And she was like, you look good. You're big. You're strong. Go, go do some work on the doors, you know, the bouncer stuff. I was like, I can do that. Do you have some number? And she she gave me a number, and I called that guy, 
And I went with all my suitcases and stuff to Rijeka, to bigger town, you know. And I just stayed there, <laughs> you know. I slept in the, those guys' firm like for a couple of nights while, while I, you know, didn't find my stuff to to sleep and stuff. And uh, it was a really really rocky beginning. So, yeah. so so let's go back just a second. You said you weren't that good in school. No, I mean, what what, what did you like in school? What what subject? What did, were you good at anything? <laughs> I was good at the gymnastics and stuff. So you, you, know. so you were always an athlete. Yeah, yeah, always. I trained uh, handball from the sixth year of my life. You know, six, six handball. Year, yeah, handball to 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 my 18 year, and I was in a in the national championship, in the national team of handball. You know, in the juniors, I don't know how you say the cadets and stuff. So I was I was pretty good, but that's always it's it's not. I don't know. It's just to waste time. You know. It, handball is really big in Brooklyn. I don't know if you know that. You yeah, know, yeah. you know, I'm from New York, and yeah, yeah, handball is yeah. very, very big. In fact, I, I have I have a handball, and sometimes I go out, and, and even during the uh, during the lockdown when it first happened, I would go out and just kind of you hit play it against handball. the wall. No, nah, you know, <laughs> I mean, I like to hit the ball a little bit. That's it. That's interesting. I, yeah. I wouldn't say I play handball. I was a goalkeeper, yeah, for 12 years. Okay. I was pretty good. Yeah, I, I was on the national level. Yeah, but. Coming from a small town, you just don't get that much opportunities, you know. And I didn't, and didn't even get a shot at handball at, at big league, you know. So it was all like child's play, you know. I had six years till I was like 16. I think maybe we're talking about a different sport because I used to handball in in America. We hit it against the wall. It's just a ball. No, no, no. Okay, no, this no. is different. You don't even know the sport. I don't, I don't I know. Like, I don't, no, I don't know the America, sport you're talking no, about. No, it's I'm handball. like goalkeeper. There's no goalkeeper in handball. <laughs> Not the one I know. I was the wall. I was the wall. <laughs> you were the wall. <laughs> no, the handball is it's European sport. Then. That's why I was like Brooklyn. Okay. No, yeah. <laughs> right, right. So l- let me ask you about this just a little bit. This, w- um, well, first of all, I mean, I know you say it was it was terribly boring, but it must have been beautiful, man. Had yeah. to be. It had to be beautiful, and the food had to be incredibly. Clean it was probably what f- a lot of seafood. I would yeah. assume you're on the coast, you're on the Adriatic Sea, yeah. Yeah, but my mother is from Bosnia and father, so I eat, I didn't eat that those seafood. You know? I, I don't eat it today. You know, it's a different kind of raising up. You know, it's, it's was, amazing. So you grew up on the sea, but you don't yeah. eat seafood. Nah, not that much. I mean, I can eat whatever you know, but not that I'm not a real, real fish guy. You know, what do you like to eat? Uh, uh, meat, <laughs> raw meat, raw, raw meat, steaks, the savage beefs. Yeah, you know, I I don't really care about the nutrition that much as maybe maybe I should, but I just don't. You know, I, I just go all savage way. You know, I just I'm gonna fight me like this. You know. Okay, so you said your mom is from Bosnia and Herzegovina. Yeah. Okay, and what about your father? It's the same. They're both cross from Bosnia. It's it's fucked up down there. You know, it, 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 you have uh, Yugoslavia obviously and. All of these countries just mixed, you know, and you have Croats living in Serbia, you have Serbs living in Bosnia. Sure. Bosnians living in Croatia, blah, blah, blah. So mine were Croats living in Bosnia. Well, let's talk about that just a little bit. Y- you're 30 years old, right? Yeah. So you were born in what, 91? 90, 90, yeah. 1990. So that was about the year that's, that Yugoslavia was, was kind of breaking up. Yeah. And Croatia, you know. Um, Forming, yeah formed their, in, you know, declared their independence. Yeah, it and was a lot start of, of the war. Yeah, start of that big uh, war we had. And I remember actually uh, seeing my father coming back from the war. It was like 94, 95, 95th. I, I, I remember that when I was on the way to him, the buses and stuff, you know. So it's a very traumatic experience, you know. We were constantly, we were in a war zone, you know. It, Rovin wasn't that much in, in that war zone. Rovin was far away from the Serbia and stuff, but you know, we lived through it, you know, we didn't have uh, nothing to eat. Sometimes we didn't have electricity, you know, the guy just coming and cutting off your electricity all the time and stuff like that, you know, it was... This was normal? Yeah, this was normal. I, I, I remember we had candles all over the place, you know, and, and when the electricity shuts down, mother was just light them up one by one. You know? sure. It was all set up, you know, <laughs> and we didn't have water sometimes. You know? They just cut the water, boom, and you have no water. And then, you know, while you pay the rent, while they pay the bills and the stuff, it can be like 15 days. So, yeah, it was a tough, tough growing up you know, in that days. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, do you think that that, uh, your fa- you said your father was was in the war. Yeah. Um. I mean, a lot of the violence kind of subsided in the late 90s. Um, and you were just kind of being born when it was really 
popping off. Yeah, and like yeah. you said, you were in a small town away from it, but your dad was involved in it. Um, when he came back, did he tell you stories about it? How, what, what was your pops like? What did your dad do for a living? Well, I, I'm not really connected to my father. You know, he went off uh, off when I was like 17 years old. My sister was 13, and he just moved out. You know, because mother and him didn't get along. Mm. And the mother is my strength. You know, I'm I'm strong on, on my mother's side. You know, I don't really look at my father's side. I never did. You know, and we are not that connected. I I am in touch with him and everything he needs. You know, I'm here, but. We never had a bond, you know. I was always the mama's boy, you know. But, but what did he do? What did he do? For oh, he was he was uh, he was a uh, uh, how do you say it? He he was a stonemason, but okay. a very very respected one in, in because in, in that part of Istria you have those old buildings made purely out of stone, and he made those th- that live stone. I don't know how you call it. He you know, live stone, and then he masons it, you know, into the little bricks and stuff, and he puts it all together. So it was a really Good business, you know. But then, uh, then there was a shortage of money in Croatia, you know, in the famous 2008, I think. And he just went mad, you know. He didn't want to work anymore and stuff. And mother had to do all all of it by herself. What did so, did your mom uh, have a job or her yeah, job was she, just to take care of you? No, no, she was a cleaning. Uh, at the, she was cleaning lady at the hotel. You know. yeah, it was a tough job. I, I remember she working all day, all night for maybe I don't know, maybe 300 euros that day. And you gotta do that to to feed me, my sister, and my father, who, who was not, you know, a working guy. He's not a working man. My mother is a working man and women. My father was not, you know, from the day one she knew it, you know. But the, the, she told me she she picked him only because he's big and strong, you know, he, his height. So <laughs> he's not much for anything else. And you have a sister, you said. Yeah. And yeah. that's your only other sibling. Yeah. 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 Are you guys close, you and your sister? Yeah, she's four years younger than me. She's uh, she's uh, uh, totally opposite to me. You know, she's a uh, very very good in school. She's a mm. magistrate, how do you say it? Here, PhD it? in uh, okay, yeah, in economics. Incredible. Magis- in my in my country, we say magister, so it's some, something like that. So, I I I, uh, I I took care of her. You know, she has a good job in Zagreb, and she has a boyfriend now. So they're living together, and it, I'm very happy for that. Did you have a lot of buddies growing up, like in your area, with a lot of like good friends? Yeah, I was always the people person, you know. And yeah, you told me that, and I just, I was always, I always had many friends, but I never had girlfriends, you know. I had only one girlfriend. That's that's interesting. You know, I never, I never was that guy who was popular in school. You know? I was fat, chubby kid with with the pimples, you know, all over the face. You know? <laughs> I really wasn't. It was so hard growing up for me. You know? The the middle school, how do you say it? Uh, the first grades and stuff. It was. Terrible experience for me, you know. I was, I was, I was getting bullied actually. Really? <laughs> yeah, I was the one on the on the, on the other side. Bullied side, yeah. And I I know how that is, and that's why I would never do it. That's why I despise people like that. You yeah, know? for sure. I despise people like that, and uh, it was really rough. Like I said, till I was like seventeen, eighteen, it was it was better to forget it all. You know? Only good things are my friends, few of my friends, and handball, obviously, and my mother. You know, that's the only good things I had. But then things changed, and you you filled out. Well, yeah, yeah. One day I was just so depressed, you know, when th- when that lady told me about the bouncer work and stuff, and I was just so depressed. And I said, "Let's just go. Let's just go somewhere. I gotta do something." And my mother was crying. You know how mother is when it's son because I'm her favorite child. <laughs> my sister wouldn't hear this, but I'm her favorite child, you know. And he was like crying, "Don't go, don't go." And I said, "I gotta go. I gotta do something. You know, I, I'm not gonna be here and be a fisherman." I don't want it. I don't want to be a bartender or a fisherman. So Robin has nothing to offer me, you know. And I just went <coughs> my way, you know. I wanted to go into the MMA first. I was the MMA fighter. I was champion of Croatian MMA. And then I went to search for the path of MMA fighter. And then I, I just walked into a boxing gym, like uh, not not deliberately. And they all beat me up, you know. <laughs> I, was, I was beaten up to death. And I was like, I want to do that, you know. I'm going to beat them all, you know. So, th- th- when did you first get into this MMA situation? Was this was this when you were still living in your small town? Yeah, yeah, it was still in small town, and uh, my coach from handball had uh, great hopes for me. You know that he thought we're gonna make a job out of it, you know, and this stuff. And I couldn't get out of him. I didn't like handball. It was just there because of my friends. With my, when I was six years old, so I didn't even know the players and the stuff. I, just, I was a good goalkeeper, but I didn't love it. And then as soon as he went off uh, the other day, I said, no, I'm not going to do it anymore. And I went to the first club 
Det får så upp en MMA in porridge. Had you ever had a fist fight? Yeah, what the, oh, that you, time no, that time no. So you'd never been in a fight in the street no, or nothing? No, no, that time no. no. So, I mean, I know that every country has different culture, right? Yeah, and yeah. obviously your country went through a whole lot of uh, culture violence. <laughs> yeah. But it's also, there's a different level of respect. So maybe not so much fighting in the street like this. Well, it, it, my country is a very, very rough country, no? and I had a lot of fights, but they were beating me all the time. So I did had a lot of fights, but I never won any. You, know? <laughs> you never won any? <laughs> no, okay. I was beaten up many times. And okay, so you did have school, fights. Yeah, I did. I, I, mean, I thought you, you mean I, I beat somebody, but no. Oh, okay. I did have fights. We were in my school. We were putting bets on me and other guy and the other two guys, you know. Yeah. It was a crazy school, so I, I would go out in the front yard and just fight. Right. You know, with the fist, but it was all like childish play. You know, it wasn't like real fist. It was just like you know the soft part of the fist. <laughs> yeah, this is kind of amazing that you wanted to get into fighting after losing so many fights. <laughs> yeah, you know? I was. I was. Nobody thought I would do it. I, and my my town is small. You know how people talk. Yeah. Oh, he's gonna be back in one week. And and I was really in that position because I went to Rijeka, and I landed a job even worse than I had in Robin. It was even lesser pay, lesser everything. It was fucked up, brother. It was fucked up. And I was like, I got to go back now. And I can't go back because I was my my pride was damaged. You know? Because if I come back, I'm going to be like this. You know, I'm going to put my head down. Everybody's going to shit on me. You know? And that's why I, I succeeded. Because I didn't have a way back. You, know? you didn't want to go back? I didn't want to go back. No fallback plan. No, I said, no. I'm gonna, I slept in my car many times in Rijeka, many times. Because the guy just said you didn't pay rent, you can't sleep here anymore. I was like, okay. And I went and slept in my car. I didn't want to go back, you know. And my mother was crying all the time. I was like, stop crying, you know. It's not going to do nothing good. I'm not going to c- come back. You know? she, she called me for five years. Wow. <laughs> just come back, come back. Oh, leave the boxing. You. She said, leave the boxing, come back. Leave the-. I said one time, listen now. We're going to go to those guys who do that. And I'm going to erase you as my mother. From every paper there is. I don't fucking care if you save me one more time to leave boxing. I'm going to erase you. You're not going to exist in my life. You know, I said, I love you like I never loved anyone, but I'm going to do it. And then she realized, you know, this is for real. Yeah. She was like, okay. She never t- tell me another time. You know. She's she's proud of you now? Yeah, my mother is everything I have, you know. Yeah, I, I love my mother so much. She she put me through all of this, you know. I could never be here without her, never. You know, I didn't have like, uh, like I don't know, two euros in heaven. My mother... Had two euros and she was sent me one. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's that kind of mother. You know? I just that's beautiful. Don't make him like that anymore. <laughs> no, no, that's beautiful, man. So let me ask you this, because <clears throat> there are a lot of famous uh, Croatian athletes, and especially in MMA, right? Mirko yeah, Krokop, uh, Miocic, like all kinds of guys. Were these some of the people you looked up to back in the day? Well. Of course, Mirko Kropal is everybody follows Mirko Kropal. So sure. he, he's like the the you must know about Mirko Kropal. You have but to know about him. I I, I look up uh, to Muhammad Ali and Joe Fraser more, you know, because mm. I wanted to go out of Croatia. You know, I didn't want to stay in Croatia. I didn't want to stay in that city. That city represented Croatia for me. Yeah, and I was just like, I want to go somewhere. I want to go fight Vale Tudo, you know, in Brazil. Yeah, I always had those crazy ideas. You know, let's just go somewhere, hiking to Tibet. Let's go to Tibet and stuff. I've done that. <laughs> yeah, it's not, I think it's nothing <laughs> special about it, but I just wanted to go out, you know, I just want to leave this place. So I had a lot of, a lot of idols from America, you know, from Brooklyn also, Tyson's and blah, 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 and stuff. And I, I know whole history of, of boxing like that. Can I ask you this? Because uh, I was uh, an NBA announcer for six seasons. Yeah. And uh, my team was the Brooklyn Nets. And the Nets... Petrovic. My man. <laughs> of course. Anyway. Drazen Petrovic. I mean, <laughs> oh. it, one of the... Rest in peace, you know, but yeah. one of the amazing, amazing NBA players. And, and yeah, just an amazing guy, Drazen Petrovic. Yeah, everybody he, unfo- says it. Died in a car accident. But, yeah. um, I, but have, I have a lot of friends named Drazen because of him. Oh, really? Yeah, a lot of. Friends. I love to hear that. Yeah, everybody's uh, like this because of Petrovic, yeah, and they're like, yeah, well, I'm proud. He's a he's a he's a jewel of, of Yugoslavia, you know. He's a jewel. He yes. was always pro Croat, but he was for everybody. He said, "I'm not just Croat, you know. I'm the right. man of the world." Sure, you know? sure. Yeah. He's an amazing guy, and and the work ethic. I don't think um, it's it's just uh, hard to to say what the guy used to do. Just sit and shoot threes all day. 
in, during practice and then you see it you know the fruition of it come you know you see it coming to life in the games yeah. also Bojan Bogdanovic Bogdanovic also do you know Bojan yeah he's a Serbian I think yeah he's Serbian okay well, he's Bojan. I know he he no, he's a he's I, a Croat. No, I think no, he's no, a no. Croat. Yeah, I think I th he's a Croat. I talk about different guy. Yeah, yeah of I course think he's I a Croat. Croat. Yeah. yeah, because he he um, well, he's a buddy of mine because he he played yeah. on our team and is a great guy. And now he's with the Utah Jazz and they're actually uh, in the in the playoffs and they're yeah, actually yeah, yeah. a lot of our guys are in the NBA now. It's, yeah. That's great. You know, I, I follow everybody. Yeah. But I, I'm not that much of a sport person, so I only follow boxing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I know everything about boxing, but the other sports, I am a little bit shaky. As you saw, it just been. <laughs> so I, I'm just wondering, though, you know, that that kind of drive that like a Drazen had, like a Boyan had, like a miracle. Do you think it's a Croat thing or this is just an Alan Babbage thing? This is a savage thing. No, no, I think it's a Croat thing. You know, I think because, uh, like I said, a lot of time there is so much good, amazing guys in Croat. When you see them sparring, you will say they, they're world champions. But they just don't want to come out, you know, just, just don't want to get out because they're afraid of so many things. You know, the fear is what, what frightens them, you know, our Croats. We just don't want to go where there is too much fear. But we are so, so talented i said to everybody i'm so much smaller than everybody but i'm stronger than everybody and you are all we are the same genetics you know we are very very tough the whole of yugoslavia it's very tough man you know but they just uh, they just fear these interviews and stuff i don't know why you know i would like to change that you know, just say it's okay you know just come do, do you know anything about mate parlov oh, yeah of course he, okay. he is from pula and that is like 30 kilometers from Rovin, so it's, right. it's in Istria, yeah because he he beat John Conti, yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah. in uh, in his first title defense, actually his first and only title defense, yeah, uh, cruiserweight, yeah, uh, light heavyweight, yeah, yeah, it was the, he was the first light heavyweight actually, yeah, yeah light I always thought he was the first cruiserweight champ, or he was the first light heavyweight champ. So yeah. speaking of weights, that's a big deal with you. A lot of people making a a, a big deal about you not being big, say, oh, he's small for a heavyweight, yeah, yeah. you know. And I heard you today say, I'll fight at middleweight. I'll fight a light heavyweight, cruiserweight. I just want to fight. I just want to fight. Where do you walk around? How many pounds? Uh, I walk around 96, 98 kilos. That is like 210, I think. Okay. Yeah, 96, 98, 210, 205, 215. That's my walk around. You know, I just don't care about nutritionists and stuff. You know, I had one nutritionist, and he's just fucking boring. You know, I would say, yo, brother, I'm hungry. And he would be like, Oh, you gotta do the glactomizus, this, like, uh, fuck you, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm fucking <laughs> hungry, you know? give me something to eat or don't, and shut your fucking mouth. I don't like guys <laughs> taking over, you know, like he's gonna do something for me now. Oh, fuck you, you you're one, two percent of the boxing, you know, going to drink with me and then, then take me, and I just, you know, talking shit about food, I don't like it, you know, P people should be a boxers, should feel like boxers, you know, should eat like boxers, if you wanna eat, or raw meat, eat raw meat, you know, and box. You can all, you can box with every single uh, food there is because I did it. You know, <laughs> I ate the worst and I eat the best. It's the same. It's just boxing. Speaking of people on your team, can we talk a little bit about your coach, Leon Leonard yeah, of course, Pietri? Of course. How did you meet him? And and I know that he's a very important man to you. Um, and I love seeing him. He's a great guy. Um, you guys have a very close bond. And you've told me before that he's he's really taught you almost everything you know. Yeah, but listen, Leonardo Pietra is uh, one guy you go to for boxing in Croatia. Everybody knows that. He's the one and only guy from Croatia right now who does something with, with us, with uh, professional boxing, with amateur boxing. My guy Marco was just uh, on, on the deciding bout for the Olympians, for the Olympic. So he, in the last Olympic, he had two guys from his club, you know, Hrvoj Sepe and Filip Hrgović, the cunt, you know. And uh, if you want to do something boxing, you, you go to that guy. And that's what I did. You know, I was just boxing in the local clubs and stuff. And I always look up to Leonardo. He's like the top of the mountain. And one day I just went there, you know, just with nothing, you know, with, with my socks on. And I was like, can I train here? And he's like, yeah, I saw you. You're maybe good, maybe not. That's a scary image, just you and your socks. Yeah. I hope that. I hope you're not being literal. Me, he bought me my. <laughs> he bought me my first boxing shoes, actually. Okay. Yeah, it is literal because I didn't have no boxing shoes. I boxed in the basketball shoes. Wow. You know, the cheap basketball shoes. And the one one fight I had in those shoes, I had 15 fights in those shoes. And one guy said, the judge said you can't box in that. 
I was like, I don't have any other shoes. What am I going to do? He's like, no, no, you can't box with that. Like, fuck you. I'm going to box with, I'm gonna box whatever the fuck I want. You know, that, that was my style from the beginning. You know? And it just went through. You know? So he, he is the one who took me in. You know, he, he talked to me. He saw that I have a, a, a larger de- desire. I was, a ch- I was chubby. I was fat. I was small. I was everything you, you shouldn't supposed to be for a boxing. You know, I don't look like a that strong of a guy. I, n- I do now, maybe, because I knocked the motherfuckers out, but I didn't do that back then. And But he saw something that nobody did. And he took me... He, be- he believed in you. He believed in me. And he saw he that. saw something. And that belief hold up, hold me up for five years, because I, uh, again, after that time, five years, nothing. You know, almost Olympiad, almost European medal, almost this, almost that. It was nothing. You know? But you had that drive, though, to keep going. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. it's great that the he grind, believed in grind. you, and that helped, that fueled the fire. But but you, to keep going, I mean, that's there's a, there's yeah. something there. You listen, Leonardo Pietra is the toughest of them. So everybody thinks you're going to succeed if you come. Well, we, he had like maybe 50 boxers, top level. Only us four, I think, it's, it's left in the game. So he's going to get you out of boxing mm. sooner than he will get you somewhere. You know, So you got to be tough uh, as your own. You, know? you got to be tough so he can mold you. If you're not tough, he will break you in two, two, two gym sessions. He will tell you, you shit, you don't know how to box. He's, he's like that. He's like, he's watching you throw something uh, he doesn't like. He's like, listen, I don't have time for you. You know, <laughs> I'm not that young anymore. Just go. I have different guys. You know? So you got to be on your A game with him all the time. Also, Dillian White is a very big part of your career. Um, can you tell me about that a little bit? I mean, when did you guys first meet? Yeah, that is a crazy story. But Leonardo Pietre sent me to all of the camps, you know, and he sent me to camp with Ajit Kabel, which is European champion. Mm-hmm. And he's like 150 kilos, you know, and I was like 86 kilos. And they were like, Leonardo, can he do it? He was like, ah, don't worry. He just, he just believed in me. He just <laughs> he sent threw me. Threw you in the fire. Yeah, I didn't have five euros in my pocket. And I just went. And then I went into with Kabel and I beat him up, you know, there's no other way to say it. I beat him up good for two rounds and he didn't want to spar me anymore. And I was like, coach, he doesn't want to spar this me. This is Kabayel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, coach, he doesn't want to spar me. I'm just walking here like a fucking ghost. Nobody looks at me. You know? they, they were avoiding me and I was there for them. And then one guy saw me there, Djakovic. He's a big uh, uh, MMA, uh, how is it? MMA promoter mm-hmm. and uh, a manager. A m- manager and he saw me and he told me, do you need work? I said, yes, of course. You know, I work for 20 euros a night. Fuck that. You know, I want to work this. You know, right. It's better money and I, knew I can fight. You know, And uh, he was like, in maybe two weeks, he called me. He said, listen, I need uh, s- somebody for Dillian White. Are you ready? I was like, yes. And I was, uh, again, 87 kilos. And I, I just lost my national championship. You know, It was a big robbery and stuff. And I wasn't in a good place. But I needed the money, you know, because I needed the money to survive. People don't understand. I went to the extremes. You know, I, I, I go until I have zero kun on my account. And then it's where I turn over, oh, fuck, I gotta do something. You know? So I'm just, I'm just like that. And I was, I was at a zero, and he called me. I said, yes, let's go. And the first time me and Dylan ever sparred, it was the greatest sparring I ever had in my life. You know, it was just that desire from me, you know, so the savage came out, you know, and I was like, what, if I can do this with Dillian White, what the fuck am I doing in Croatia, you know, I, I can be a superstar, I said, I talked to my coach, I can be a superstar, because Dillian White couldn't believe it, I was, he was 30 kilos heavier than me, 35 kilos heavier, and we have a brawl, and he said, listen, oh, uh, do you have a manager and stuff, I said, no, I'm an I'm, I'm amateur fighter, and he said, I'm going to manage you, and I was like, yeah, he's just talking shit, you know, everybody says that, and everybody said, yeah, you're good, I just clap on the back. I was like, yeah, okay. And then I was uh, uh, in my room, and he called me again. You no, know, Dylan White calling me on Instagram. <laughs> that was also like when I met you. I was like, yeah, I'm screenshotting it to show my to my friends. <laughs> and he was like, oh, let's let's make a deal with this. And I was like, yeah, you do for real. He's like, yeah, I want to manage you. You're good. You're good. You know, you're gonna be good. And that's how we we started off. You know, crazy story. My life changed over over a minute. And that's when the Savage was born in that first sparring session yeah, with Dillian, yeah, yeah. because now you realized. Get, listen, now I get proud because it is, it is because I realized I, I went, I went. In, I have one picture. I'm gonna show you. Which it's me in a. I, my face is bashed up. I went on Dillian with with the force he never saw. You know, with the force of a desperate man. That that's really what it is because I had nothing. I went to that trip in London with twenty pounds. 
<laughs> listen to this. I come up in the in the London, you know, in the, all this great in Logbro, Logbro University. Everything is expensive there. And uh, the guy meets me at the airport, Amon, my brother Amon, and uh, he drives me to the stuff I'm gonna sleep. And he said, "Listen, Alan, we didn't sort sort out these things with uh, dinner and stuff. Can you pay for yourself? We're gonna get your money now." And I was like, "Yeah, oh, bro, I only have euros. Uh, I had twenty pounds." And he was like. Oh, let me ask them if they receive euros. I was like, "Fuck, what the fuck am I gonna say if they do?" Because <laughs> you didn't have like, any. He was like, "Sorry, do you take euros?" She's like, "No." And I was like, ah, "I got hundred euros, bro." <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. So I, I was really, really desperate at that time, you know. And I said to Dylan also, uh, I said after he took me, I said I, w- I was about to leave boxing, bro. <laughs> you know, she's like, "No, he will no, he has so much to give," you know. Well, they say boxing is a hunger sport. Yeah. You know, when yeah. you're hungry. It's yeah. a poor man's sport. That's what we say. It's a poor man's sport. That's why I said you don't need nothing for boxing. I didn't have shoes till I was 50 fights. No, fuck, fuck everything. You don't need nothing. And I always like to beat up on the rich kids. <laughs> That's also one thing I like to do. You know, when I'm in the gym sparring with nothing, and when those kids come with Adidas shorts, uh, you know, yeah. Nike, this sure. uh, Asics, then, and then I just beat the shit out of them <laughs> in the sparring. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. How much does Dillian have to do with your matchmaking? Well, everything, especially you no. Know, he's my he's my manager, you know. He's my manager and promoter. So I I put everything in the hands of Dillian. You know, but, but when he sends me some lousy guys, I said no. You know, I don't want to fight journeymen who just lose. You know, I just don't have nothing out of it. You know, this guy is a super guy. I think uh, I don't know who find him actually because we we've been trying to fight an opponent for two months you know, and we didn't succeed. So somebody somebody of them find him. You know, and I said yes, this is a good guy. Have you speaking of your next opponent? Have you seen a lot about Damian Chambers? Do you know a lot about him? Yeah, a lot. Well, maybe seven seconds. <laughs> yeah, I saw seven seconds of him. I don't care. I just saw the he's <laughs> eleven and one, but I see he's a little bit scared of me. You know, I saw it in the press conference. I saw fear in his eyes. Yeah, but he should be scared because I'm very, very dangerous right now. You know, my hand is much stronger than it was, and I beat up a Dillian, uh, beat up Tom Little, who is 125 kilos. Of pure hardness, you don't you don't understand how hard this man is. He took so much blows from so many top contenders, and he keeps bouncing back. You know you can't be normal. His his skull is fucking dense as as a, <laughs> as a concrete ball. You know I, I felt like I'm I'm punching a concrete ball. Really, yeah. I broke both my knuckles. I broke both both to my uh, shoulders and my right elbow. I broke everything with that man. The, so, the Jipopotamus. <laughs> Jipopotamus, fucking hard. <laughs> Tom Little, man. Tom Not yeah. So Little. That's what he used to go by. <laughs> Tom Not So Little, man. Big shout out to Tom Little. I love him, man. Great yeah, guy. Yeah, great guy. Great he's a great we are guy. Friends. We are friends now. Yeah, yeah he's, he's a really good guy. It, speaking of another opponent um, that just hit me up this week, he said uh, to say hi to you, Niall Kennedy. Oh, Niall Kennedy, my yeah. guy. That is the first time, I think the only time, the Savage didn't want to come out. Do you remember that fight? Yeah, I do. I, I think do. it was a shit fight because I just couldn't, I was just, I just couldn't punch him in the face. He's so good. He's, yeah, he's a nice look guy. Look at me with his, his puppy eyes all the time. <laughs> you know, on the end of the first round, I was like giving him main look, you know, like I always do. He was like this. <laughs> so I was like, what the fuck, bro? We're fighting. And you can see it. Don't be nice. Don't be like, so nice. I was like, yeah, he's a great guy. It's hard. Boss, be, it, I can't hit this guy in the head. It was strong with me. Yeah, you know? it'd be hard to punch him. So I guess there is a little bit of a soft side to the savage. Yeah, it is because you know, I need something <laughs> to for savage to get out. You know, and Nile didn't give me nothing. He gave me so much respect. He talked like I'm, I'm, I'm Muhammad Ali. <laughs> no, and I was like, just come on, let's go. I, I, I said on the press, I don't want to shake his hand. He was like searching for my hand. He couldn't believe it. <laughs> I was like, God, <laughs> what, what, what should I do? <laughs> Crazy guy. Anyway, he hit me up. He said, oh, man, please tell Alan yeah. I said hello. So he says hi. Um, but going back to Damian Chambers just for a second, um, he just had a fight with Jay Farrell to win the uh, Central Area Championship. I don't yeah. know. if you, Have you seen this fight? No. It's pretty <laughs> exciting, man, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. It's, it's a really good. exciting it's fight. Yeah, that's what I it, want. It's only two rounds. Yeah. But man, it is fast and furious. Yeah. Um, he got dropped, like okay. dropped hard by a right hand from Farrell. And he he got up and immediately he dropped Farrell with like a left. No, it's a good fight, brother. And then sorry, I didn't and, watch it. And and the ref, I think it was Mark Lyson, he didn't call it a knockdown, but but Farrell's legs were gone and they started going at it. Farrell was trying to hold and then he sp- 
sparked him. Chambers sparked him with a right hand. I mean, he he stretched him. I mean, yeah, put him yeah, put good. him to sleep. It's good. Yeah, but it doesn't uh, it doesn't uh, how to say. Uh, I, it's not something that I didn't sort. Of, I put to sleep a lot of guys, you know. Yeah. So it's it's another another day at work at me. You know, well, but you I'm ha- glad you have. And and another thing to your credit, I mean, you'll you'll take on all challengers. Yeah, of course. That's what I wanted. This challenge for this is my comeback fight. You know, they wanted to give me somebody bad. And I said no. Nobody wants to see that. Nobody wants to see savage some journeyman who has two, twenty defeats. You know, I want to I want to be the best. You know. Well, it's it's a much different thing. I'm sorry to interrupt, but it's a much different thing when a guy's coming to to win. Yeah, of course. Right? And I think I think I think Chambers is coming to win. But right, it, it's a different yeah. it's a different thing than a guy just coming to survive. I don't know what what he's coming for. I didn't see that fighting his eye. I don't know, you know. I don't know because I didn't even look at him. You 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 know much more about him than I do. But I see him as a little bit uh, versus Chandel Winters. You know that that's the kind of style of fight I expect because they they have the same guard they have the same punching power the Chandel is is better punching power and stuff and he couldn't do nothing to me so I just don't see any way he can threaten me you know I can take a bomb in my hand that is the the the, the first thing I learned in boxing I learned boxing to to getting punched in the head so hard so viciously every day that's how I learned to box you know and my my nose broke in first two two weeks maybe you know and just because my head was already formed it didn't get used to the punches, you know, the, those guys who train for from the six years old. You have formed nose and stuff. I didn't I have a small nose. My mother always say I had the most beautiful nose in the world <laughs> until I started boxing. So, you know, I did all the sacrifices. So, so he's not going to spark me, that's for sure. You know, So I don't know what he can do other than that. You know, you know can we just go back just for a second? Because I, I, I feel like we missed something here. When you talk about how you went to the gym, you were getting beaten up. When did you start? When did it switch? Because there might be people out here listening that, that want to go to the gym, that, that have gotten beaten up themselves, that, that want to do this. When did, you, when did it start to click and you said, hey, man, there's something here. Like, I, I, can, I, I can fight. When did you start winning fights? When did it start yeah, feeling yeah. good to you? How well, long listen, did that take? It, it took, I think, I think two weeks. So that is all you need. That's that it. That is all you need to if, see. If you're if a you, savage. If you are for that sport. You don't need to be a savage. You just need to be made for it. You know, because boxing, you need to be made for boxing. You need to be genetically modified. You know, you need to be different, different breed of people. Because, because our body, your body, my body, his body, it's, we are not meant to be punched. We are not made to be broken. You know, we are made to be uh, eating, uh, drinking pina coladas. You know, with the girls like we discussed before. <laughs> you know, and, and doing all those things you you said you would do and stuff. You know, so the body doesn't want to be punched. So you gotta go out of your mind to 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 get used to it. I like it now, you know. I like it. I I went through so much pain. I had six surgeries, I think, big surgeries. So I went through so much pain for it. You no, know, at least I can get a reward from it. You know what Mike Tyson said. You no, know, just you just go through all of it. You go, you gotta go through hell if you wanna be a boxer. Speaking of the surgery, uh, you know, <clears throat> for people that don't know, you were on a great tear, and then speaking of, you you hurt your shoulder and and you had a surgery. How is that feeling now? No, it's much better than before because I had uh, problems with that uh, shoulder for uh, some time, you know, for the last year. Every time I went to Dillian to spar, after two sparring, it would get inflamed, you know, and it would hurt really bad. And they put those stripes, you know, those magnetic stripes on and stuff. So it was really bad, shoulder was really bad for a long time. But I keep t- talking to my body, just hold on for a moment, you know, just hold, hold on for one more fight. And then Chandel happened. Boom. And then I was like, just hold on for one more. You know, I gotta, I gotta prove this. And then Neil Kennedy, boom. And then Tom Little, the biggest fight in my life. You know, the biggest stage. Everybody looking at me. What can I do? He was the last test. Sure. And I was just, please, just hold on. And my shoulder was almost gone before the fight. You know, uh, the, the, that uh, uh, sparring session before the Tom Little was very, very hurtful. You know, it was, it was fucked up. I knew it. It was done. And then in the first round of Tom Little, I, I remember hearing it just clicking. Just, yeah, just yeah, you felt it. Yeah. Fucked. Yeah. Fucked. But you, something that I, we, we kind of have to, I'm a, I'm a Wolverine. I heal up really well. I've been yeah, very, it. I've very, been very injured and been told by doctors that there's going to be this problem, this problem, and then I heal very quick. You healed in what, two months from that? Yeah, yeah. I was, I was at full power in maybe two, maybe three months. Three months top. I, they said I'm going to need 10 months. 
They said it's gonna be good if I I, I start training in eight months, months, and I started training after 16 days. You know, my coach, uh, my my uh, surgeon Tadja Petrovic said, just give me two weeks of rest. You know, please, Babish, I know you can heal, I know everything, but just give me two weeks. And I was like, oh, I don't know, but okay, I'm gonna do it before because of you. And I gave it two weeks of full rest. And at the 16th day, the 15th day, I started training. I said, no more, I'm not gonna do that. And he was like, you're gonna fuck your shoulder. And uh, every other day I hear you clicking, you know, click, clicking and hurting. And I was like, just go through it, go with it, go. With it. I, I went through the pain, you know, and just after one month, it became like a, like a concrete. You know, now it's so tough, you know, it's so tough. I love, I love my shoulder right now. But it's that savage mentality to just push through it, it after the injury and, and do the PT, the physical therapy, right? To, to, yeah, to, to rehab yeah, yeah. the arm. You got to do it. Every day, every day. It's and it's painful. Times. It's fucking painful. They but stretch it. Yeah, they it, stretch it uh, all the way. Ah, oh, it's painful. But I always say more, more. Every time I say it. And they, they were like, you were crying. I was crying with so much hurt. Because I could do this. And, and they stretch it all the way full. And every time I said, I want, I want you to stretch it full at least one time. So every time we stretch it full, it was all on the verge. It, it's a big risk, you know. It's a big risk. I went, I went on hiking with that kind of shoulder, and I had those sticks, and and the sticks fell through, and I hear it clack, I hear it clack, and I was like, it's done, it's done. You know, I did it all, but it's done. And on the and then I imagine Thor getting into my shoulder, you know, with Mjolnir, putting it into my bone and turning it back, and it was good again. So Hold nobody on. can you, tell me. You said you imagined Thor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it was. Tell me about that. Listen, I, I went on a hiking like trip, you know, it's like 10, 10 kilometers on the mountain. And <laughs> my guy's watching me like I'm crazy because he knows the story. <laughs> I, went on the, I went on a hiking and uh, we were doing the sticks. You know? I was already good. It was already maybe one month after the surgery. Okay. And I went tick, 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 and my right shoulder just uh, fall through, you know, fall through. Broom and I, I, I kind of it weird, weird it snapped. It snapped in a weird way, and I hear it click, click, you know. And I was just like, no, no, no. You thought just, you re-injured just, it. Yeah, I thought it's done. I, I was sure it was done because I couldn't move my arm. Yeah, it was like this, and I couldn't move my arm, and I was like trying to move it. I couldn't. And he was, and I was just like, please, some, some something happened. And I then I remember Thor coming. You know, I, I imagine Thor coming, striking his Mjolnir into my soldier. Into my uh, shoulder, bam, and it came back. And it put him back. He put it back. Poof, and then I hear it click again, and I was like, "This, this is good." It, uh, from that day, I am on full power. From that day, it almost even went in even better than much, before. Much, but it just clicked in the right mm. spot. I think I did something wrong that ended up really good. But that is the risk you gotta take. You know, it's, it's all taking risks. If I went the normal way, I wouldn't be fighting today. I agree. I, I, I got in a terrible motorcycle accident, and uh, this arm was broken in several places, and it was actually cracked off. It, the, it wasn't uh -huh. even connected. And the orthopedic surgeon, I went to the rock star surgeon, and all these people wanted to cut me open, put rods in my arm, and he said, no, I just want to sling it and let it come back together naturally. He said uh, he believes it was going to work. He said it's going to take a long time, and I was back very quickly yep. and now it didn't do the surgery did not do the surgery and it's i do still have pain at some different times carrying different weights yeah, yeah, but yeah. i can do pull-ups push-ups and so. but it's the mentality yeah, you know yeah. like i just wasn't going to stop in the moment that i could move it i went to pt and i just yeah. had them pulling it and pulling it every yeah. day i mean it was brutally painful but same stuff but same it works stuff. but, but it listen, works that mental strength it's proven it's it's we huge. have mental view because we said i don't know how you said mental straights for all over all yeah. over our body so if you send a good energy it just goes good energy if you send bad energy you're gonna be fucked you know i believe that so let's just talk about that for a second let's talk about the savage because i know a lot of people want to want to want to know about this right because yeah. this is your alter ego uh, the savage and you uh, we we figured out where where the savage was born that was fighting with dillian white how do you conjure him up well, listen uh, let, let me go back so we were at the, at the dillian white camp i never heard about the savage or stuff stuff like that so we were we were sparring it was crazy he said it was the toughest sparring she ever did everybody who saw it couldn't believe it that i can do that because dillian is so much stronger tougher bigger he can pull me up with one arm you know <laughs> he's that kind of he's tough. a very strong guy he's a very strong guy and i was just going head to head 
head to head, toe to toe, you know, no, no running around. And and uh, after one sparring session, he just said to me, look at me, I said, you're, you're a pure savage. And then I felt it. I that felt was it right when now. it came. And then I was like, I was like, well, maybe that wasn't me, you know, because I was always, I called my coach every day, Pietre, how can I do this with Dillian? It's so weird. I thought he's going to kill me, you know, but I, I went to, to find out because I knew there was something there in me. And uh, he tested me in all, well, he, he, he really want to hurt you when he spars. You must see Dillian when he spars. He really wants to hurt you. Sure. There is no, no holding back friend kind of stuff. He wants to take your fucking head off. And that's what, that I'm the same, you know, so... So and uh, when he said you you're really a savage and then I was like fuck you know what is he talking about and then I started to learn about the alter egos you know that night I started to learn about lottery and I didn't stop till today you know I learned a lot but there is a lot a lot lot uh, it's a whole area that people don't really understand exists you know Tom Cruise has an alter ego Brad Pitt has an alter ego uh, I don't know who I, uh, Denzel Washington you know a lot of those big guys need something to, to get back, you know, because Alan, that Alan we talked about from the coastal town who was bullied and stuff, he couldn't talk to Eddie Hearn like that, you know, he couldn't talk to Tom Little like that, he couldn't talk to Dylan White like that, I couldn't talk to you like that, you know, I will just say, yeah, I'm a waiter and stuff, I'm not a waiter, I'm fucking savage, you know, and when I'm a savage, I can tell to Eddie Hearn whatever the fuck I want, and he respects that, but when I'm Alan, I would never be able to say that. You know? Can I ask you who is Maximus? No, Maximus. I, I I invented Maximus just for today because I read a lot about the alter egos and I'm on the different level now, so I have many personas. Though. But the savage is savage is the, the biggest of them. You know, the savage the savage invented the Maximus. So just but, but what is Maximus? What's he like? What's his name is Maximus Decimus Meridius, commander of the legions of the North and of the Felix legions. Yeah. And he, a, he wears a helmet, yeah. Yeah, he's a, he's a fucked up guy. But <laughs> <laughs> I just, he just he just he just puts his helmet on and walks through the airport, you know, without the head mask and stuff. And people are looking at him, and he's like, "Ah, oh, fuck you, I'm Maximus." <laughs> they were they were just like, you know, you know. I right, listen. We got to wrap this up soon, but I I um. There is one name that that came up, and you, you did say something about. It. I wasn't going to bring him up, but yeah. you, you did say something about him. Philip Pergovich. Yeah. Can we talk about Philip for a yeah, second? Of course. Is I this is this a fight that you would like? I I, I assume it is. He's yeah. a he's a fellow Croat. Um, talk uh, to me. Listen, listen. He's a guy. He's a guy. I really hate. You know, I I so don't like. I turn into a savage the moment you you said his name. You know, I, I so much. I I have so much. I, I have discomfort talking about him. I fucking hate him. You know? Why? Want, why? Why? Because do you not he's like him? everything I'm fighting against. He's that bully. He has the has that bully mentality. You know, he bullies everyone. People don't know that he's he's been in courts with guys. You know, he has he's been in five courts already. He just fucking destroys everyone's lives. You know, he's a fucking bully. I hate fucking bullies. You know, I hate fucking bullies, and I want to show the world. I want to show the creations that a little guy can win. You know, you don't have to be big and all this. He thinks he's beautiful, looks like a fucking, fucking, I don't know, I'm not going to even say it. So, uh, you know, you don't need to be that uh, perfect, like Olympian kind of, you know. So, fuck your Olympics. I'm going to bust you. This, this is a fucking fight. You know, the ring for me is a fight. It's a fight for life. You know, I don't fucking box. I don't want to do boxing with you. I want to I rip your fucking head off. And in the street, I will destroy him in 15 seconds. So who who will stop me from doing that into the ring? Do you know the, these pro judges? They don't care what you do. You no, know, I, I am a boxer. I know how to box. I can do whatever I want. You know, I'm gonna punch him behind the hand. Uh, I'm gonna punch him with my knee in, uh, where it hurts. You know, I'm gonna do every every single dirty trick that I know. You know. And I think it's gonna be a great fight for the Croatia. You know, I wanna bring Metrum to Croatia. You know, this is that that is the legacy. You know, Babic and Hrgovic brought Metrum to Croatia. That is what I want. I will not stop. I don't fucking care about him. He's a fucking idiot. But I need him to do this. I can't box, I don't know, Solomon Dakas in Croatia. Nobody would would come for him, you know. People would come for, to, to, to see me bash Hrgovic calling. People would come for that, you know. People will come for that fight, no doubt. All right, and speaking of the people, they have a couple <laughs> questions for you if, uh, if you be generous enough to answer yeah, some fan course, questions. Okay, so Connor Melvin asks you, how many times do you aim to fight this year? Well, this is uh, of, uh, in in few days one fight. Then I will have one fight at Fight Week uh, with Eddie Hearn in, 
yeah, with Hearns Garden. We're going to talk about it in Tuesday. And then I would like uh, two more fights. That I think that would be perfect for Savage, or at least one more fight. So three or four times until the end of this year. Okay. Johnny B. Bad asks, you've been installed as the WBC ranked number five in, in the new Bridgerweight World Rankings. Would you consider fighting at that weight if the opportunity crops up? I guess we already answered that. You said yeah, yeah, I you'd, you'd fight. fight at anything. Yeah, but that's a good question because I want to fight cruiserweight, I want to fight bridgeweight and heavyweight. So I don't care. what. The, this is a catchweight. It's not even a heavyweight fight. This is a catchweight, 96 kilos. So I can do. I was 100 kilo. My coach called me catchweight. I said, okay. The next day I was a 96. Savage does it. Okay. Um, final question. Roland PPP asks, how would you describe the current state of play for the Croatian boxing scene at the minute? Uh, Croatian, he thinks amateur or what does he think? Croatian boxing scene, amateur scene or pro, pro scene? I guess he's talking about either, just the boxing scene, amateur, pro. Well, it, it what, was what, never been better. You know, it's never been better because the last Olympics we had two guys and uh, these Olympics we have two guys again, you know, one girl and one guy. So it, it's, it's a bad, listen, we are a real small country. We have four Olympian, four Olympic boxers in in four years, you know, in eight years cycle. So it's great. You know, in in pros, me and Hergovic are coming on in top ten guys. You know, so you have Milas, you have a lot of other young wolves. So it's it's pretty good, pretty good. I would say, good. And you and Hergovic on a collision course. Yes, we are. Oh, yes, we are. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> he better uh, know it. Uh, the savage is <laughs> fucking haunting him. I'll know? tell you what, man. He's listen, being haunted by the savage. You know, I don't fucking care. He can beat me. He can he can knock me out in one second. But he is gonna come into me in, into to that ring, and he is gonna bring match room with me to the creation. You know? And he can fuck himself, but he's gonna do that. You no, know? I can promise him that. You know? Well, it's uh, the build up. I think is already there, and uh, I think the fans want to see it and. Hopefully, eventually, we will get to see that fight. So, Alan, we're going to see a great fight this weekend, hopefully, with you. And uh, we look forward to that. Wish you the very best of luck. Thank you so much for spending the time. And again, man, it's just such a pleasure to see you Thank always. You. Uh, I really love seeing you. And uh, I wish you the best of luck this Saturday. To the fans out there, thank you uh, for all your support. Remember to please, you know, hit the like, subscribe for, for Apple, Spotify, YouTube, whatever, for Matchroom Boxing. And we'll be back from Newcastle tomorrow night. David DiMonte checking Boom. out. Thank you.